Welcome to another Space Gas video tutorial. In today's video, we look at dynamic frequency analysis. The purpose of a dynamic frequency analysis is to calculate a structure's natural frequencies, periods, and corresponding mode shapes. These properties are dependent on the geometry, stiffness, and mass of the structure. You can follow this up with a dynamic response analysis that calculates the effect of dynamic events such as wind gusts, vibrating machines, moving traffic, or an earthquake. We will first conduct a dynamic frequency analysis on the simple 3D multi-story frame we have on the screen. This will be followed in the next video by a dynamic response spectrum analysis that models the effect of an earthquake on the structure. The user input required for a dynamic frequency analysis is surprisingly simple. Once the structure has been created, the only extra step for you is to define the masses that affect the inertia of the structure. The masses are equal to the weight of the objects that are attached to the structure and vibrate with it. They generally include dead loads and live loads, but not wind loads. A structure that has a lot of mass attached to it will vibrate slower than a structure with less mass. To keep things simple, let's generate just one mass load case containing masses of one ton on all the internal nodes and half a ton on the outside nodes. Because we are applying the same mass to all the selected nodes, we will apply the loads to the selected nodes as a group. Without this, we would have to enter the mass separately for each node. We will input the masses in mass case 1 and apply a mass of 0.5 tons in all three global directions. This doesn't mean that there are three masses, it just indicates that the mass has inertia in all three directions. If we had a very large mass with a significant rotational inertia, then we could also define its rotational masses, but the usual case is to leave them as zero. One reason you may need to define rotational masses is if you have combined all the masses from the entire floor of a building into one large lumped mass at its center of gravity, rather than applying them as separate smaller masses. In this case, you would need to calculate the rotational inertia of the large lumped mass based on the location of each of its contributing smaller masses. The calculation for this is given in the space gas help system. Now, we will select the internal nodes and apply a mass of one ton on each of them. Everything we have done so far excludes the self-mass of the structure, and this is normal because the self-mass can be added automatically by space gas. Adding self-mass is just a matter of adding self-weight to our mass case 1. You should define the gravitational acceleration in just the vertical direction, and the self-mass of the structure will be automatically included in all three global directions. Alternatively, we could have placed the self-mass in a load case of its own and then combined it with the other masses using a combination load case. Note that if you have already gone to the trouble of defining your static loads, you can convert some of them to masses using the static load to mass conversion tool in the renderer. Make sure you only convert loads that have mass, such as dead and live loads though. Don't try to convert wind loads to masses. Now we are ready to perform the analysis. We will leave the load case list field blank so that all mass cases are analyzed, even though we only have one in this case. The tolerance controls the accuracy of the analysis. A tolerance of 0.001 means that the natural frequencies will be accurate to three decimal places. This tolerance is suitable for most jobs. In order to stop the analysis looking for frequencies that are outside of the range we are interested in, we can set upper and lower frequency limits. The analysis searches for modes with the lowest frequencies and works upwards. However, if a frequency shift is specified, then the frequencies below the shift value are skipped. It can save quite a bit of analysis time if some of the lower frequencies are not required. 
Finally, you need to specify the number of dynamic modes. In this case, we will request six modes. Now we can look at the animated mode shapes, starting with mode 1, that has the lowest frequency, and then using the page down key to move through the higher modes. For each mode, you can see its frequency and period under the Legend tab on the side. You can also get a report showing the natural frequencies, periods and normalised mode shapes. Of course, a dynamic frequency analysis can't calculate the magnitude of the deflections because we haven't told it what is causing the vibrations. That is the subject of the next video, in which we will apply an earthquake to the structure and then conduct a dynamic response spectrum analysis in order to obtain actual deflections, forces, moments and reactions.